Hello and welcome back to Zinc Sterling. Today's tutorial will be over flower cluster petty point earrings. These are the materials you'll need. Please feel free to pause the video and write them down. We'll start this project with 18 gauge sterling silver wire. You'll also need a jump ring mandrel and you're going to want to use the section that is 4.3 millimeters. This will ensure that the bezel cups we use later fit perfectly into them and get a full solder all the way around. Start out by making enough jump rings for both earrings. It'll take seven for each earring. Now that we have the first seven jump rings made, we're ready to cut them free from the spool. Don't be flustered if you drop the spool. It happens to me all the time. At this point you should have seven jump rings and they should all be ready to be butted together and soldered. At this point it's time to get out a couple pairs of pliers. I like to use two pairs of parallel pliers but you can use just about any pliers that you feel are comfortable holding the material without dropping it that don't have any texture to the faces so that you don't mar the silver. You're just going to want to butt the seams up so that you get a really nice solder. At this point, all your rings should be ready to solder. So get out your fire brick, your torch, and whatever flux or paste solder you like to use. Personally, I use chip solder and some Mighty Flux. I find it works best for me. I personally like to heat each ring up individually and put just a drop of Mighty Flux right on the seam. This way the solder flows great in that location.
Now I'm going to heat each chip of the solder till it melts into a little bead and I'm going to pick it up with my soldering pick, heat the ring, place the bead directly on the seam and the solder should flow. Sorry for getting the torch tip in the way there but you should get a pretty good idea of what I'm doing here. At this point it's time to get out the silver stripping and a ruler. That way we can cut it down into even pieces that will melt into silver beads so that we have just a little more embellishment for the earrings. So each piece of the strip I'm going to cut down into a half of a centimeter. I find that works pretty good for the earrings. If I was doing a larger piece like a necklace I might use a whole centimeter, maybe even a centimeter and a quarter somewhere in there, just depending on the size of the piece that we're doing. But for this piece we're going to be using half centimeter sections. Now that we have all the pieces cut, we're going to put a slight bend in them and lay them out on our fire brick. And the bend is just so the flame gets around it a little more so they melt quicker so that we're not trying to heat more of the brick up. So the goal here is to heat each piece of stripping up until it melts into a shiny bead. If you pull the flame away too fast, what's going to happen is the silver is going to collapse and wrinkle on itself and it's not going to look aesthetically pleasing when we're all done. So what you want to do is heat it till it melts, till you see that shine, and then slowly pull the flame away from it to keep it red and keep it cooling off as slow as possible throughout the process. The slower it cools, the more that smooth surface is going to hold. So whenever we go to polish it later, you'll get nice smooth beads and you're not going to get little wrinkly beads that don't look very pleasing.
Now that we have all our beads made, it's time to start attaching the jump rings to the bezel cups. What we do is we place one 4mm bezel cup face down, we place the jump ring on top of it, try to level it off as good as possible. I place one drop of the Mighty Flux right in the center, and then I'm going to heat it up with a torch so that the flux goes all the way around the piece and creates a nice surface on it so that the solder will flow evenly through it. Now that it's all fluxed up and ready to go, we're going to place two pieces of solder on the back of it. Now at this point I'm still using hard solder. I'm using the same solder that I used to close the jump ring. And the reason I do this is because the jump ring is not going to open back up. It's just going to flow, the solder is going to stay in the seam, and the rest of the solder is going to flow around the bezel cup. If you do heat it too much, you will melt the entire piece. So you do got to be careful. Now that the solder is flown, we're going to flip it over, and as you can see, the ring's sitting higher than the back of the bezel cup from the surface of the brick. So all we're going to do is we're going to heat it back up. As soon as the solder flows, we'll push down on it from two sides, pushing it flat down to the surface of the brick, and then we can pick it up, and you have one piece made. You just want to repeat this process until you have all of the cups attached to rings and then it's time to start soldering them together in little cluster patterns to make our petty point earrings. When you're soldering multiple pieces together without anything holding them from the outside, they can shift really easy. So a big thing you want to do is heat the piece, put the flux on, let it bubble up and let it bond the pieces together and then once you get all the pieces bonded together you can then heat it back up and start pushing at it from a couple sides with a solder pick and that'll just kind of force the cluster all together. Then you start placing your chip solder and once you get it placed all the way around you're going to heat the entire piece up till the solder flows all the way around. If you do it correctly, everything should flow and solder together at the same time. If you run into problems, you can always reheat, add a little more flux and a little more solder. The goal is just to get all the pieces connected. You don't want gaps or spaces because this can leave weak points later on, which even though they're going to be dangle earrings and they're not going to come in contact with a lot of stress, still you want to minimize any possibilities of future repairs. Now that you've got your clusters made up, it's time to solder on the beads. I like to solder them on two at a time, just so you're not working with too much at the same time. It's easy to control two of the beads and the cluster. If you try to do all of it at the same time, you'll find that the beads shift really easy and it just causes a hassle. So I like to start with two beads, you can even do it one at a time, and at this point I'm finally using medium solder. So the goal with the solder here, I like to cut the chips a little bit bigger and I'm going to place them so that they're leaned against the bead. This should cause the solder to flow to the bead first but then immediately to the piece as long as you get your heat nice and even around it. The bead being the smaller piece should grab the heat a little bit faster than the rest of the cluster but 
If you do it correctly, it should flow to the bead and then onto the jump rings either side of the bead. And you should get a nice suck. Now that you have all your beads soldered on, it's time to make a smaller jump ring, cut a notch in it so it fits onto one of the beads. And then at this point, you're just gonna repeat your soldering process. You're gonna heat it, add a couple drops of Mighty Flux, heat it again, let the, let the flux condition the surface so that the solder will flow. Then you're gonna take two chips of Easy Solder, you're gonna melt them one by one, grab them with your solder pick, place it on the seam, and if all goes well, you should end up with a nice jump ring to attach to your hook. Now that both of your pieces are made and you've pickled both of them and cleaned them thoroughly, they're now ready to have the stones set in them. For your stone setting process, you're going to need six pieces of coral for each earring and one piece of turquoise. These are all four millimeters, they fit perfectly into the cups. Now I'm sorry that I got my focus a little out, the camera focused on the rocks in the background, not on the piece, which was kind of frustrating. First you're going to take and you're going to add a little bit of sawdust to each bezel cup, just one at a time as you go. You're going to pack it down in there and that's going to give a nice cushioned surface for your stone to sit on. That way, in the event that you drop this on a hard floor or stone surface, it should minimize the risk of the stone breaking upon contact. Now you're just going to take a soft wooden dowel, push the stone down, this should seat it in the cup nicely, and then, well, trying to hold it down with a little bit of your fingernail, and then using a burnishing tool to just push over the little serrated teeth on the cup. And then you'll slowly work your way around, smooth off everything, and you're just going to repeat this process on each piece of coral individually. And once you're finished getting all the stones set, you should have a beautiful piece. You should then take hot soapy water, clean it, maybe use a little metal polish, clean it again, put them on your hooks, and when it's all said and done, you should have two very nice Petty Point Cluster Flower earrings. I hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe. And if you like the work, please tell your friends about it. You can always email me at zincsterling at gmail.com. The information will be on the screen shortly. And thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful day.